Saxon Algebra 2, Lesson 74. Oops. It's time to rediscover our love and passion for distance problems. Yay! Remember, John calls these uniform motion problems which remind us of what a nice guy he is because the essential ingredient in these problems is that our characters, right? We have different people doing, going on little trips in these problems. They're always moving at a constant rate of speed. That is not true to life, but it's way more complicated math-wise if they're slowing up and speeding, if they're still slowing down and speeding up. Um, I remember talking to Jacob Barlow about this when he was my student. I think you guys probably know Jacob Barlow. How old is he now? 21 maybe? Um, and his little brother, Jeremiah, who is now maybe, what, seven? So there's a big age gap there. And I would make up stories about them taking pogo sticks and riding their pogo sticks from here to the Space Needle. And how these problems assume that he and Jeremiah would be going at the same speed and a constant speed all the way from Edmonds to the Science Center. Or, I'm sorry, the Space Needle. Um, that is not very realistic. I can't imagine that they would go the same speed. And I can't imagine that they wouldn't slow down on the hills or have to take breaks or, you know, speed up in traffic. I don't know. I assume they're on I-5. I can't really tell you. But... Uniform motion is a way that we simplify these problems. So whenever you see these words, don't be mad at them. They look scary and hard, but just go, oh yeah, this is J just Jacob and Jeremiah Barlow on their pogo sticks. We're pretending it's a constant speed and it's not. What I prefer to call these problems is dirt problems. And the reason I like to call them dirt problems is because it looks like this equation, and this is what you have to remember to get these problems started, okay? We're always working from this as our base equation. We tweak it in different ways for different problems, but it always starts from here. So I want to call these problems dirt problems so that right in your brain, this will pop up and you'll go, oh, okay, fine. Now, we've already talked about three different kinds of problems here. The first kind I call the Lord of the Rings style. And the reason that I do that is because they're about going to a specific destination and then going back to where you started from. That's how you can tell that you've got one of these problems on your hand, is that when you read the story, the word problem, it will talk about someone going on a trip and then returning. Just like Frodo and Sam. And when they took that trip to Mordor and then went all the way back to the Shire, the first distance was equal to the second distance. Our picture illustrates that. We understand that in the story. They went from the Shire to Mordor, hucked in the ring, bit off, got the finger bitten off. You know the story. But then they turned around and they went all the way back to the Shire with, you know, reparations in Rivendell. And of course, they had the eagles to fly them part of the way. That's fine. You can go different routes. You can, no, you usually go the same route. Um, I take that back. But you know, they flew with eagles part of the way. That's fine. Here they had to walk, but we're pretending that the distances from the Shire to Mordor and back again were exactly the same. So we understand how this equation can be true. The first distance is equal to the second distance. Now, this is great, but when John sets these problems up for us, he doesn't give us the distances. He gives us the rates and the times. So we have to rearrange this a little bit in order to take into account that we want to plug in rates and times, but we know that distance equals rate times time. So this distance is equal to the first rate times the first time, right? D equals RT, D equals RT. 
and then the second distance is also equal to a rate times a time. We just use the information on the second trip, right? When they were coming back from Mordor and flying on the eagle's wings, they were going a lot faster, and that's why it took them less time, less time to cover, cover the same distance. This is now in the form that we can use as our base equation, and that's what the star means. We use it for the base equation. Going on a trip and coming back. The other form of this one is when one person goes on the trip and then the other person goes on the very same trip. This could be uh, Frodo and Sam. So we would say the distance of Frodo equals the distance of Sam. And we could say the distance of Frodo equals the distance of Sam. That's super easy. But then we also want to substitute in the rates and times. The rate of Frodo times the time of Frodo equals the rate of Sam times the time of Sam. Okay, and this is a base equation that we can use. So we listen carefully to the stories. And that's the hardest part, you guys, is you have to listen in the story and see, is the distance the same for both parts of the trip? Or are the distances different? If the distances are different, it might be a type two problem, which we call the Titanic. In the Titanic style problems, we either have something like this, where things are starting in opposite places and then meeting in the middle. This would be the ship bumping into the iceberg, for example, right? The ship started out in England, the iceberg started out probably closer to the Arctic Circle, the North Pole, and they both were traveling through the North Atlantic until bang, they bumped into each other. Now, we don't know if these distances are different or the same. I'm supposing that the ship traveled a lot farther, but we don't know that. So we just call this the distance of the ship, and this would be the distance of the iceberg. And we don't know if those are the same. It's not like this problem where we know that the distances are the same. In this one, all we know is that between the two distances, they add up to this total distance of K. So in these, we say that the di distance of the ship plus the distance of the iceberg equals K, the total distance, okay? And again, we don't have distances, we have rates and times, so we use this basic information to change these distances into the rate of the ship times the time of the ship plus the dis, oh, I'm sorry, the rate of the iceberg times the time of the iceberg We'll add K. All right. It is 100% true that these base equations look very different from this base equation. And that's because the story is very different. This is about two things starting in faraway places and traveling toward each other and going bump in the night. All right. The other kind of story we often get in this type of problem is... Thing, two things going apart. Here was two things coming together. Here, this is the sad one, here we have um, Rose and Jack on their little raft talking together. Rose saying, I'll never leave you. Oops, sorry, that's a lie. Um, she stays on the little raft and floats away to safety and poor Jack goes down to the bottom of the sea where he dies. Sorry. So the distance of Rose, and apparently she got to, to safety, right, in the, um, the SS California, I believe she was rescued by. Um, no, it wasn't the California. The California was the one that didn't hear them. It's the other ship that picked them up. But the distance of poor Jack is to the bottom of the sea. And again, we don't know how far that is. They might have been the same distance, but we're not going to make that assumption. But we do know what John will tell us is that they ended up some distance apart, which we call K. And again, that's the total distance. All right, so in this case, the distance of rows plus the distance of Jack equals K. And then we substitute in rates and times. So rate of rows times time of rows plus rate of Jack times time of Jack 
equals k. And that is our base equation that we use to plug things into. You guys, the only way to understand these problems is to read the word problem carefully and then be able to discern which type of problem it goes into. Here, we're looking for things that are either coming together and meeting in the middle or things that started together and went in opposite directions and ended up far apart from each other, okay? That's why I gave them movie names so that you will be able to relate them to something that you already know and understand. Okay, the third kind that we've already learned are, I believe Princess Bride is a good model because there's constant chasing in these problems. And I don't have particular parts of the movie yet that I've um, connected to these, but I think you'll get the gist when you see what's going on in these. In these movies, there, or I'm sorry, in these problems, there is chasing going on. Oftentimes two people will start at the same time and one will get further away. Okay, so in this example, whoever is running that first distance and whoever's running the second distance, they leave at the same time, but a gap opens up between them. And we call that gap K. That's the difference in how far they travel. And this is tricky because now K means something different than it meant in the last problem. Now K means the gap between the two, all right? And in these problems, you'll understand the story because so-and-so left at the same time, but by such and such a time, the second player was further ahead, right? Or sometimes you'll get a situation like this. One person gets a head start and the second one catches up to them. The Dread Pirate Roberts has got to be in here somewhere, but I don't know where. Okay, and here are the gap is at the beginning, the distance of the first one, the distance of the second one, okay? So the gap can be in either place, and I think there's a third variation that right now my brain is not grabbing. But in these, we can see that the, the way we can put these equations together is that the distance of the first person plus the gap is equal to the distance of the second person. Oh right? Because you have to add the gap in order to get the same measure. And the same is true for this one. The distance of the first person plus the gap equals the distance of the second person. Okay? And again, once we get this figured out, then we switch. Rate 1 times 1 plus k equals rate 2 times 2. All right, I need to watch The Princess Bride and come up with actual stories for this. But this is a scenario in which people are chasing after each other and either one gets away or somebody gets a head start but the other one catches up to them. All right, and I believe that there's a lot of chasing that goes on in Princess Bride, quite a lot. Okay, and so this is a base equation. This is what we are starting with. We worked on these kinds of problems last year. We've worked on them again this year. If you are still struggling to match the story in the book to one of these three scenarios, then please talk to me and tell me that you're still struggling with that. What we're going to do now is we're going to move on to a fourth kind of problem. It's a little different than its brothers. It's more of a renegade and these are called both distances given. And sometimes the problems that we work in here, we could work using one of these three methods, but this is kind of like the quadratic equation in that this way of doing it will work for any style of problem. All right. Friar Tuck rode the 24 miles to the fair in Nottingham at a leisurely pace. He stayed too long and he had to double his speed on the way back in order to get home on time. So here's what I hear first of all. Friar Tuck goes to the fair and then he turns around and goes back home. So here's home. 
and here's the fare. Right? I hear information about times and rates, but I don't care yet. I just want to know that he went to the fair and then he came back. Now, this looks to me like a style number one problem, but we're not going to work it as that. We're going to work it as this new style, just so we can figure it out. All right. So, we're going to call this the distance going to the fair and this the distance back. We can see that they're the same, but we're not going to write them like that. Instead, we're going to say that, and remember, this is at the core of everything that we do. We're gonna deal, the, deal with these as if they were separate distances. So I'm gonna say the rate of going times the time of going equals the distance going and the rate back times the time back equals the distance back, right? Makes sense? Okay, then it tells me that he stayed too long at the fair and he had to double his speed on the way back. Okay, so his rate coming back was twice as fast as his rate going. And I think about that for a minute. He doubled it coming home. So let's say he was going five miles an hour on the way there, and then he would be going 10 miles an hour on the way back. Would this equation give me that? Yes, it would take the rate of going, which is five. It would multiply it by two. Okay, that works. And then what do we know about the time? His total traveling time was nine hours. Okay, so that tells us that the time going plus the time coming back equals nine hours. Now that I've written all these out, do you notice that these are familiar? This is the system of equations that we wanna solve. We've been practicing this, right? Usually I write them across this way, and we say that either this one or this one is gonna be the base equation, and this is the one that's gonna tell us which one we want to be able to plug directly into it. RB is by itself. There's the RB. So that tells us that's the base equation we want to use. Right? Is this all coming back? It's great, right? Okay, so all of that information we're going to bring now to the surface of our brains and use it. But we have a few more pieces of information we want to fill in here. We need the numbers. Friar Tuck rode the 24 miles to the fair. Okay, so the distance to the fair equals 24 miles. And now we can also say that the, oh, I'm sure that should be a G going. The distance back is also 24. Um, he stayed at the fair and the total traveling time was nine. Okay, I already put that into the equation. So now I can change these and make those each say 24. Now they look exactly like what we had in our previous problems, right? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with this as my base equation and I'm gonna plug these two in. So I'm gonna say RBTB equals 24, right? That's this. RB equals 2RG, so I can plug that in. And now I have to rearrange this. I want it to be TB so I'm gonna subtract the TG. So I can say TB equals nine minus TG, right? I want this because I want this. We already chose this as our base equation. So I need the time back, not the time going. So that's how why I decided to subtract that one. All right, so now I'm ready to substitute in. And so I put this in here, nine minus TG. I get that crazy feeling in my head where it's like, what am I even doing? I don't know what I'm trying for. I don't know what I'm gonna get. I'm just trusting the algebra, which you always can do. Now I'm gonna distribute. So I get 18 RG minus two RGTG equals 24. Oh, okay. And now this is where the happiness comes. 
I noticed I created this Frankenstein monster that I have right here, and I'm happy because I've used this equation, this equation, this equation. Now I'm using the fourth one, and I know that all is right in the universe. So I know that RGTG equals 24, so I'm gonna plug that in right there. And I go 18 RG minus two times 24 equals 24. Hmm, that's pretty cool, right? So now we're just algebraing and you guys have done this before. This is 48, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add 48 to both sides. And I'll get 18 RG equals, this will be what, 72. Okay, I recognize this is two times nine and this is eight times nine. So when I go to divide this, I am quite sure that 18 goes into 72 four times, right? Because if it's two times 19, then it must be 18 times one, and this must be 18 times four. So when I divide it, I get the, where will I put my answer? The rate of going equals four, okay? Now I go back to my equations and I figure out my other business, right? That means the rate coming back, let's see, this one will help me with that, right? If the rate of going is four, then the rate coming back, I multiply it by two, so that equals eight. Do you like it so far? I do. Um, let's do the time of going, they have to multiply together to equal 24, so this must be six, right? Because the rate of going is four, so four times six is 24. And then the rate of coming back, we could use this one, or I always like to use this one. They have to add up to nine, so this must be three. And there are my answers. If you wanna get fancy, you can put in units. I mean, I think that's always a good idea. Miles per hour and the time, these are hours. Okay, so even though this problem fit the model for the Lord of the Rings styles problem, we can use this one and it will work out just fine. Okay, beautiful. Let's do the other, there's only one more problem for this lesson. Thank you for being patient. I had a huge preamble because I was reviewing our copious knowledge on this subject before I dove in. And it is quite a, calcul a complicated calculation to solve these beasties, but that's why John gave us practice ahead of time. He knew we would be scrambling. Atalanta ran four times as fast as her challenger. In fact, she ran 80 miles per hour in less than it took her challenger to run 28 miles. Now, this one doesn't fit an easy picture because we've got this girl running 80 miles and her challenger is just running 28 miles. The distances are really different, right? But that's okay. We know this is our friend Atalanta. I have never heard that name before. And this was her challenger. Named, I hope not for the space shuttle because that met an untimely end. So now what we can do is not try to fit this into one of our three patterns, but let it be its own thing. The rate of Atlanta times the time of Atlanta equals 80, that's her distance, right? Distance equals rate times time. I'm just reversing that, which we often do. And then the rate of the challenger times the time of the challenger equals 28. This problem is one of the unique ones that we need this format, this fourth kind of problem to solve because these two are running distances and they don't relate to each other in any way. We don't have 
We don't have a scenario like this where they're either coming and meeting in the middle or going apart from each other. We don't have any information that they're traveling in any relation to each other like these. It's just this girl ran this far, this girl ran that far. Okay, fine. Then we'll just set it up as two different distances. Um, now we look for some information about rate. Atlanta ran four times as fast as her challenger. Okay, that means the rate of Atlanta is greater than the rate of the challenger. We know that four times, we have to multiply something by four, and we can say we're gonna have to multiply this by four to get it bigger, right? Because this side is the larger. Those inequalities help me all the time. And what about times? Um, Atlanta ran her 80 miles in two hours less. So the time of the challenger was greater than the time of Atlanta. And we have to add two hours to Atlanta to get them to be the same. All right, once again, inequalities help me so much. Yay, okay, look. There's our four equations. We look, we know either the first or the second is gonna be the base. We look to the third. We want to use the rate of Atlanta, so we want this one. Time of Atlanta is not set up the way we want, so we're going to have to subtract two from both sides and use the time of the challenger minus two equals the time of Atlanta. I just used a little algebra to rearrange this, so this is ready to go right in there. Okay, so this is my base equation. I set it up like this equals 80. I plug in RA equals 4RC. TA equals TC minus 2. Again, I'm at that point. I don't know what I'm doing. I have no idea what I'm going to be able to solve for. I'm just, I picked the base equation baked based on this third one, and I plugged the time one in, and I'm hoping that I'll get these two letters and we'll be able to use that number. Let's distribute and see. And by now, I'm sure you have faith. Ah, interesting. Usually we get the double variable. Up until now, we get the double variable um, in the second term on the left. But this time it's in the first term. That's fine. Doesn't matter. But there it is. Hallelujah. There's our RCTC. So we're going to plug 28 in right here. 4 times 28 minus 80, no, not 88, RC equals 80. See what I did there? I got real excited about that 80, and I wrote it too soon. Alas, alas. Okay, um, let's multiply this. That would be, let's see, 4 times 20 is 80. 4 times 8 is 32, so that would be 112, right? So we're going to subtract 112 from both sides. This goes away. We have minus 8RC equals minus 32. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That's going to come out. These almost always come out nice and clean, you guys. So the rate of the challenger equals... Four, and I'm going to glance and check my units. Miles an hour. So this is miles per hour. Now what about the rate of Atlanta? The rate of Atlanta is four times the rate of the Challenger. So that must be 16, right? Beautiful. Now what about the time of the Challenger? I like to make them match because these two have a relationship. I like to do the two rates here the two times here, and I like to make the times be for the same person as we go across. That just keeps the calculations neater. It fits with what we have here. Okay, the rate times the time of the challenger equals 28. We know that the rate of the challenger is four, so the time must be seven. And then for the last one, we have our options. We can go up and use the other rate times time, or I like to use this equation because then it's being used. TC minus two, TC is seven, so that must equal five hours. Did we get it right? 
rate of C is 4, time, um, rate of A is 16, time of the challenger is 7, time of Atlanta is 5. Yay! Okay. So, in these problems, we're not trying to write one equation that puts both distances together like we were here, right here, all of our equations, our base equations, combined the two different distances. In this one, we say, forget it, we're not even gonna try it. We're just gonna put each of them separately and then use additional information about the rate, additional information about the time. Those are our four equations. Notice that the rates usually have to do with multiplying, that's the relationship between them, and with the times, it's usually adding or subtracting. That's a pattern John follows a lot. He could make that different, but he doesn't. All right, I'm gonna be asking you guys about this lesson for your review problem. I'm not gonna give you one of these, but I'm going to ask you, how did it feel? How are they sitting in your brain? Please let me know where the challenges are. Thank you, goodbye.